Hi, my name's Glenn and I'm here to offer you 20% of my company for a £50,000 investment. The company's called UV Body Sculpture and what it does pretty much is this. And what it will very soon be able to do is this. In the past, this kind of toned, defined look would have taken years to achieve, but using UV body sculpture, this can be achieved in three to four weeks. How? Well, that's easiest because this look is simply the result of a process called selective tanning. You simply place a screen across your body, relax in the sun or under a sunbed, and al allow your body's natural tanning process to do the rest. Now, I've owned this product, I've owned the patents for 14 years, and I've done nothing with it. It's gathered dust in my dad's lockup. Um, so I've got no sales figures to talk to you about, no, no book work whatsoever. But what I do have is a potential target market that I think, I think is colossal. Because who wouldn't want to look a little bit better for 20 pounds? Thank you, any questions? A laconic and remarkably frank pitch from Kent-based father of four, Glenn Harden. Despite a 14-year lull in trading, he believes now is the time to plough 50,000 pounds into his patented tanning aid. But Duncan Bannatyne seems more interested in the entrepreneur's accomplice in the den. Um, you've brought a model up the stairs. Has he had some of this UV tanning? Oh, absolutely, yeah. He has? Yeah. Yeah? Because it looks just natural to me. What, the abs and that look natural? Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. You do, uh, that's absolutely superb, Duncan. Yeah. But he's my son. He's got absolutely no abs. So he's actually a fat boy, and you? <laughs> no definition whatsoever. No, it's all a little pudding. No, he, he, when, he, when, he's, when he's really cut, he's, he's OK, but no, the abs are all... It's, um, it's selective tanning. Right, so what, no, my question is, is, is that he's used this selective tanning? Oh, sorry, yes, yeah. He has? OK. We could probably let the model go now. Yeah, OK, okay. then, Glenn. OK. okay. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Right, uh, how does it work? Can I hand you one? Can I take yes, one? Yes, please, out? yeah. The methodology is incredibly simple, and but the results are very, very good. So what I do is, do you I put this bit there? across my body. Yeah. So therefore it will tan between these bits more, yeah. and they'll be browner. I think they've got that, Duncan, yeah. Right, Thank okay. you for explaining it. With a little dragon assistance, the proposition Glenn's offering is finally explained. But what of the man behind the invention? Theo Pafitis wants to know. Glenn, what do you do? I've run my own business, a little family business, manufacturing kitchens, uh, kitchens and bedrooms. And I've got six employees that rely on me for their jobs. How did you then get from manufacturing kitchens and bedrooms to these screens when? I actually developed them 20 years ago, but um, long before that, to be honest, Theo, when I was about 12 years old, I, used to, I was fascinated. We always went down, my mum used to buy us a season ticket to the local swimming pool in the summer holidays to get rid of us. And I was always fascinated by people that come in that had fallen asleep in the sun and they'd walk in, they looked like they were wearing a string vest. And I, it started from there. And then after you got the pattern, you just put it all in your dad's lockup. In my dad's lockup. So why, I... why, why, when you developed it, you obviously must have tried to sell it. I obsessed. Did about... anybody buy any of them? Oh yeah, I've probably sold. Yeah, my my brother done me a web page in his bedroom. It was getting one hit a day, and then some days it was two hits. Is that a clue? No, no, I don't think it is a clue. If you don't have it, if nobody knows about something. How the hell are they going to buy it? The dragons look bemused as they get to grips with Glenn's inimitable pitching style. Deborah Meaden wants to bring some order back to the den. Glenn, hi. Hi, Deborah. Um, you're very charming, but I wouldn't for one second consider investing in you unless you could give me something that said I've got more than something that I did 20 years ago and left in my garage. Because so far, that's all you've said. Yeah, no, and that's a very good point, a very valid point. 
Um, but I don't know what else to say. You understand there's got to be something. Um, well, God, this is probably... Uh, I've, my dad taught me never ask for money, never ask for anything. Don't ask for money. This is the single hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And you're probably going to ask me in a minute a business plan. That's loaded. Not I had a wine. I ain't got a clue. Well, it's it's and it's a very unusual approach. I have to say, it's quite a high risk strategy. But what you do have to do is give us a reason to invest. I, I sent an an, an email. Uh, to the tanning shop, just so that I had something. And I got an email back the following day, asked him for more details on the product. Now, I know that's nothing, it's not an order, but to me, from that to that, for £20 is like a given. I can't see a downside to it. Whether it's the steadfast belief in his product or his beguiling manner, Glenn seems to have momentarily tamed the fierce multimillionaires. Can Hilary DeVay see any future for this business? Glenn, I honestly think you could well be onto something. Why not get out there and get it sold? Take, take two weeks' holiday, go out there and market it. Selling half a dozen screens doesn't interest me in the least. It's not my skill set at all. But if you've got six people working for you, if you, you must have a salesman. Uh, my brother is my salesman, yeah. So why doesn't he? Whilst in between oh, going... Oh, you you've got to meet him. We check for a pulse every week. Yeah, regularly don't find him. He's got a... <laughs> He's got a... <laughs> your son spoiled you, and your brother have to check for a pulse My every week. Support, yeah, he's got but a low... He's my rep. He's got a low-mileage car. Glenn, Glenn, let's just come back to a very valid question here. When you lie down to sunbed, you put this on top of you. Yeah. But most sunbeds now are stand-up sunbeds. Mm -hmm. So what happens then? They fall off. <laughs> they do. You, that, you... He's got the measure I mean, of you. For goodness sake. <laughs> I'm, I'm... So, I'm a bit lost for words now. But I, I, I don't think this will sell for 20 quid. Some tanning shops will buy it and they will sell it to the customers. I see it as is 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 five quid maximum. I'm out. Okay, my friend. Thank you. Normal den order is resumed as Duncan Bannatyne delivers the first blow to Glenn's hopes of securing the cash. And Deborah Meaden is now ready to show her hand. Glenn, I know you said you don't want to sell half a dozen here and half a dozen there, but do you know, when I started up, that's all I was selling. Mm -hmm. A bit here and a bit there, because it just tells you whether or not there's a market. And if you've been able to say to us, I've had 20 yeses, I mm -hmm. think you might have had a slightly different response. Mm -hmm. I think I'd, I'd struggle far more if I'd been knocking doors down and trying to flog a dead horse. This is new to the market now, because for 14 years nobody's known about it. And yet, yeah, you might well be right, it might be nothing. I'm out. OK. Glenn, it's taken you 14 years to send an email. No, I disagree. I disagree. It has, yeah, yeah, technically it's taken me 14 years to... Doesn't that worry you? Because it would worry the pants off me, Glenn. You've been refreshing. You've been honest. But I'm out. OK, thank you. Two more dragons out, and Glenn's prospects look bleak. And Hilary DeVay looks to have made up her mind, too. Glenn. Do what I said. Get out there and get it sold. OK. I can't put 50 grand into it. It's too hard earned. And I wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. OK. Glenn, I, I've not said very much. Um, I can't work out whether I like it or I don't like it. Well, if you've got two sunbeds standing next to each other, one of them does this and one of them does this, which one are you going to go on? Same price. Well, that's what I would probably do, Glenn. I would take this product to a sunbed manufacturer and I would licence it to them and say, every time you use my product, you've got to pay me X amount of money. Nobody can copy you because you've got the patent. No. So I would do that. I wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. Thank you for that. <laughs> A disappointing end for Glenn. He may have charmed the dragons, but it takes more than that to part these multimillionaires from their cash. I think they might have missed a trick, to be honest. I still genuinely, genuinely believe that. I believe in the product. I didn't plan to charm them into an investment. 
I think Duncan started the ball rolling by trying to be the funny guy, and uh, uh, you do have to get up pretty early in the morning to be funnier than me, and uh, he unfortunately didn't get up early enough.